Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Bob Weaver, your Pan American Airlines weather reporter. Tonight, we have a special program for you. Our program tonight is not designed to entertain you, but to inform you and perhaps save your life and the life of your family. As you know, we're in the midst of the hurricane season, and the probability of a hurricane coming at any time is here with us. But let me stress this, first of all, that there is no hurricane approaching Florida now. I'd like to repeat that just once again. There is no hurricane approaching Florida now. But when it does happen, and if it does happen, there are federal agencies and local agencies waiting to serve you. Right now, I'd like to introduce to you a friend and associate of mine, Jim Dooley. Hi there. This is Jim Dooley, your Atlantic weatherman. I'm a little out of uniform tonight, but there's a good reason for it. There is no hurricane. Instead, we have a program about hurricanes. You see, there are thousands and thousands of people who have moved into this area who have never experienced a hurricane, who don't know what to do in the event of a hurricane. And that's why we prepared the following information. Now, I'd pay close attention because what you're about to see and hear may mean life, your life. Now for part one of Hurricane. I am Gordon Dunn, Chief of the Weather Bureau's Hurricane Warning Service here in Miami, Florida. What is a hurricane? A hurricane has been described by some as a meteorological monster of the sea. It is born over the ocean and spends most of its lifetime over the ocean. But about one-third of the Atlantic hurricanes will reach the Atlantic coastline of the United States somewhere. Some hurricanes are comparatively weak, may have winds of only 75 miles an hour. Others may be quite strong, with winds of 150 miles an hour or more. And about once every 30 years, we may have a super hurricane with winds of 200 miles an hour or more. A hurricane in 1900 killed some 6,000 people. And in recent years, one hurricane has done $1 billion of damage. We pick up the hurricane some distance at sea, and we issue advisories once every six hours. And when a hurricane is within about 48 hours of the coast, we may issue a hurricane watch. This is not a warning. It merely means what it says. Be on the watch. Keep in touch over your radio and TV for all Weather Bureau advisories and all other hurricane information. And if you require more than 12 hours for all necessary precautions, begin these preliminary precautions at this time. When the hurricane is sufficiently close, so that it is perhaps only 12 hours away, we will issue the hurricane warning. We try not to issue hurricane warnings in the middle of the night, but try to give you at least nine hours of daylight warning. These hurricane warnings are a compromise. We would, of course, like to give you more than 12 hours warning. But if we do, the accuracy will suffer. So the 12-hour hurricane warning uh, seems to be the best possible compromise. The hurricane warning will give information on when the strong winds will begin, when hurricane winds will begin, how long the hurricane winds will last, and how strong the hurricane winds will be. Furthermore, we will give you information on the tides. And incidentally, I should remind you that most of the loss of life and most of the damage from the hurricane occurs along the immediate coastline. And sometimes it is necessary to evacuate low-lying sections. If that is necessary, we will give you that information. However, at this time, I might warn you that the eye of the hurricane will pass over a small section of the coastline. You want to watch out for that because many people, especially those who have not been through a hurricane, may think the storm is over. Again, listen to your radio, keep looking at your TV, and the Weather Bureau will tell you whether or not the storm is over. In modern, well-built homes, away from the beaches, uh, you are reasonably safe. I might add 
that those hurricane parties, which we hear about, are not the best ways to ride out the hurricane. Keep clear-headed. And in conclusion, you do not need to fear a hurricane, but always respect it. The Weather Bureau's advisory warning is flashed across the airways. The small craft are on the move. Small boat owners are warned individually by government ships and harbor police to get their craft inland, away from the huge waves and blowing wind to safe anchorages and docks, to the many rivers surrounding the city. No matter where the hurricane strikes, the Coast Guard, aided by the local harbor patrol, are in evidence to help towing, to marshal boats, and to make sure the river entrances are left clear to permit latecomers to safely find anchorage. All boat owners are cautioned not to dock when a storm approaches, since this is clearly the best way to damage a craft or even sink it. As the hurricane approaches, the ships of the Coast Guard and the Harbor Patrol turn and they head for a safe berth also. How well they have done their job is demonstrated each time the hurricane roars into Florida. For dollar by dollar and ship by ship, the damage reports from small boat owners grow less. You know, for the protection of life and property, there are many precautions to be taken. Tonight, we would like to show you just a few of them. First of all, around the house, make sure you have a small stove that can be operated with canned heat. Keep plenty of canned foods around. Because during hurricanes, you will not be able to get out to the store and a lot of your food on hand will get spoiled. Have a flashlight ready. Make sure it's in good working condition. Keep plenty of candles around in case of an electrical failure. And again, in case of an electrical failure, a battery operated radio so that you can continue to receive hurricane information. And very, very important, a good first aid kit. Now, a lot of us forget sometimes that when the hurricane strikes and the power fails, it's difficult to get gasoline. So here's something to keep in mind. Drive into your favorite service station and fill up your tank. Because as I said, not only might the electrical power fail, but also the attendant will not come down to operate his station. So fill up your tank with gasoline and be prepared. Take down your television antenna. The hurricane might pick this up and use it as a missile. Coconuts can also be very dangerous. Cut down as many of them as you possibly can. Your furniture should be taken inside to a safe place. Hurricane might use this as a missile again against your own home. In fact, anything loose around the house might be distributed around by a hurricane to hurt someone or something. Even garbage cans should be taken inside. For you boat owners, secure your boat. And one of the best possible ways to protect your home is with awnings. They will not only protect parts of the outside, but the interior also. Make sure they're closed securely. There might be a water shortage or some water contamination. So before the storm, fill your bathtub with water, and then be sure to boil it before using if possible. If you're going to a Red Cross shelter, keep this in mind, you'll have to take your special medicines, special formulas, blankets, and other paraphernalia that you might specifically need. The Red Cross does not allow pets in their shelters, so take yours inside the house, make sure he has plenty of food and water. Most Florida homes are built to withstand hurricanes. Not only do they have the natural beauty, but they have that specific building code which makes them uh, protective against hurricanes. Remember this, if your home is construction, be sure to go to your nearest Red Cross shelter. Well, these are just a few of them. But now to probe the hurricane. And in order to do this, we must start with the people who do this job, the hurricane hunters. 
After the disturbance has been spotted and generally pinpointed, locating and tracking falls to the hurricane hunters. Part of the Joint Hurricane Warning Center, the hunters are planes and men of both the United States Air Force and the Special Weather Section of the United States Navy. As the signal comes in from a suspicious area, the alert goes out to the crews, and the men assemble for briefing. Here, the aerologists and meteorologists explain what is happening. The plane commander outlines approach routes, and the crews listen, take note, and wonder just how bad it's going to be in this particular hurricane this time. <laughs> The right gear for each man is important, and every man on board the aircraft will have a specific job. If that job is not done right, and at the right time, well, you can't pick up dog tags and 50 fathoms of water. The briefing completed, the men begin to assemble their individual equipment. As other men ready the ship outside, in the balmy Florida weather. It's pleasant now, but in three hours, these men will be in the midst of a storm with a collective force equivalent in destructive power of many atom bombs. But they go about their work professionally quiet. Everything ready, the men are aboard. Stow the chutes, lay out the calculators, and check their instruments. This is the easy light, the approach into the fringe of the storm. But everything must be fastened down, including you. And now it begins to get rough. The ship starts to vibrate. The men know they're about to enter one of nature's most violent instruments, hurricane. On go the windshield wipers. The pilot fights the wheel, and the crew grab for any support. Well, this is the job. This is what they came for. So the pilot takes her down, down through the clouds, the wind, and rain. Thank you. 
The photographers record the outside scene, and the pilot takes her in low enough to see, but high enough to stay out of water. Like a fighter between rounds, they fly into the peaceful center of the eye. And they work for a while in calm seas and without grabbing to remain erect. The air is hot and humid as they pinpoint the exact center of the hurricane and get their message and information back to Fleet Weather Central, where another craft will be sent out here to relieve them. And this Neptune and her hard crew can go home. The men aboard the Neptune have been through the winds. They know them from the field, the pitching, and the radar scope. They knew before they put on their chutes, failure of any body or anything in the wind near the eye of the hurricane would be fatal. And they keep telling themselves, this is no boy's game. It happened before, a year ago, almost to the day. A daring flight into the eye of Hurricane Janet may have ended in tragedy. This is the forecasting room, Fleet Weather Central, Master Sea, where Janet is now being flocked. At this moment, planes and ships are crisscrossing the storm tossed Caribbean in search of nine Navy flyers and two Canadian newspaper men missing on a flight into the eye of the 110 mile an hour hurricane. A two-engine Neptune P2V carrying five officers and four enlisted men was last heard from around noon yesterday. Already, that hurricane has claimed some 200 lives in the Windward Island. The newspaper men are identified as reporter Alf Tate and photographer Doug Croft of the Toronto Daily Star. The newsman had tried for a year to get aboard one of the Hurricane Hunter planes to write a story and take pictures. The officer in charge of the Fleet Weather Central is Captain F.A. Davidson. Here is Captain Davidson. The last position report we received from number five plane, which is now in the Jacksonville plane that was operating out of Guantanamo yesterday morning, was from this spot here. He gave a position which was about 200 miles southwest of Kingston, and was, he was flying in the neighborhood of 700 feet and simply said he was commencing penetration. The search for this plane got underway about 6 o'clock last night, and uh, there are at least two or three, maybe more, naval ships working in this general area around where he was last heard, and there are at least seven or eight aircraft working out of Guantanamo in the same area. There are also some other airplanes working out of Panama up on this side of his last position. I do not know exactly how many there are, nor exactly what their area of search is. We are, of course, all deeply saddened by the loss of this plane. We knew most of the people in it, and it certainly hurt us because they have been working hard. As a matter of information, airplanes of both the Navy and the Air Force have been working this sort of work with all sorts of planes. This is the 12th season now. And this is the first lost plane of either sex. And men must die for other men to learn and progress into greater effort. This is Patrick Air Force Base in Cocoa, Florida. To track these faster than sound craft, the Defense Department has established a series of radar stations that extends well out into the Atlantic Ocean. The path of these missiles through chance, follows the nearly exact path of hurricanes. Here's an Air Force representative to explain how the system works 
in tracking a hurricane. Thank you. I'm Major Durbin, commander of the weather detachment at Patrick Air Force Base, Florida. The Air Force Missile Test Center is located at Patrick Air Force Base on a peninsula which juts out along the Florida East Coast. The base is just halfway between Miami and Jacksonville and about 60 miles east of Orlando. The Missile Test Center operates the Air Force Missile Test Range, which uh, extends from Cape Canaveral down through the Caribbean area. Fourth base, Jupiter, Grand Bahama, Eleuthera, San Salvador, Maracuana, Grand Turk, Havana de la Mar, Maguez, and St. Lucia are set up in a nearly straight line to track guided missiles. This line intersects the path of almost all hurricanes in either their formative or mature stage. These bases are equipped with radar tracking devices and weather stations with the most modern equipment available for probing the upper atmosphere. The interest of the Air Force Missile Test Center in hurricanes is, quite naturally, the protection of life and government property. Our function in the Joint Hurricane Warning Service is to serve as a vital source of up-to-the-minute data concerning the location and structure of hurricanes. Observations are made at 15-minute intervals by the radar operator at the range station which has the hurricane on its scope. All other range stations make radar reports at 30-minute intervals to describe the surrounding cloud conditions. Range weather stations operate 24 hours per day as routine. In the event of a hurricane, they make nearly continuous balloon releases to sample the upper atmosphere. All radar reports and weather observations are received by Air Weather Service forecasters at the Missile Test Center Headquarters Weather Station via the longest submarine cable of its type in the world today. The reports are immediately relayed by teletypes to the Joint Hurricane Warning Center in Miami, so that in a matter of minutes, the hurricane forecasters have all current information available. The position of the hurricane is known at each instant in which it is within the radar range of the Missile Test Center range station. In providing all these reports, the Air Force Missile Test Center is assured of the best possible forecast of the future course of the hurricane's movement from the Weather Bureau Hurricane Center. And now back to the Weather Bureau. First indication of a tropical storm or hurricane will likely come from a plane or a ship. Uh, this may happen in the San Juan District, the Miami District, or even the New Orleans District. Once it comes in and an advisory pre is prepared, it is coordinated with the Air Force and with the Navy. Then the advisory is distributed over the special uh, hurricane uh, teletype network. Uh, this one extends from Brownsville, Texas, to uh, uh, Charleston, South Carolina. This uh, special hurricane communication teletype network this year extends from Miami uh, to Portland, Maine. For the first time, uh, we have some five new New England stations on this network, uh, which includes Portland, Bridgeport, New Haven, and Hartford. Now watch as the new teletype circuit is tested for the first time. Meanwhile, other far-flung private organizations have received the information relayed by various agencies to the Weather Bureau and are well into a planned program designed to keep the electricity flowing. That spark that means so much to us in the 20th century. This man is an accountant. But by attending classes and listening to lectures, he knows what to look for. He is watching power lines for the Florida Power and Light Company, relaying his information by radio and courier back to a master control center. His information, along with thousands of others massed by the Power Corporation, will be studied and controlled so that, as soon as possible, after a tropical storm strike, the life-giving spark of electricity will flow again into homes and hospitals, hotels, households, and business. We pause here to remind you once again that there is no hurricane. We'd also like to point out that time does not permit the mention of the many organizations engaged in your protection during a hurricane, such as the National Hurricane Advisory Committee, the Public Health Service, police, and fire departments, and many others. 
Yes, all of these organizations are banded together to protect you. Now, you can aid them by helping to protect yourself. And now to the conclusion of Hurricane. The storm is coming. The latest word is out, and the city prepares for the onslaught. The signs come down, and everything movable is rolled to safety. Merchants have been hard at work as the city battens down. For despite the cost of putting up the shutters and closing doors to business, the amount of damage that could be done might well run into the billions as it has in the past. These businesses are closed now. The few pedestrians are on their way to homes and hotels. In a few hours, who can tell the damage? Collectively, the citizens tune in their radios and watch television. And only the people whose jobs require them to go out are moving through the streets. The signs of the hurricane are already in evidence, and the city waits. The men and material of the federal government have done their job, and the citizens are in shelters, the boats in safe harbors. The storm is coming. The city is prepared. The streets are empty, and man has done his best. Quietly, expectantly, the city draws its breath. The hurricane is due. This special hurricane project is respectfully dedicated by WTVJ and the people of South Florida to Gordon Dunn and all his associates, both civilian and military. This has been a presentation of the Public Affairs Department. Hi, I'm Shelly. Thank you for checking out our NBC6 South Florida YouTube channel. You want more videos like the kind you just watched? Click right here on the subscribe button below. Get the latest stories, interviews, caught on camera, and more. Digital exclusives as well. All for you. Subscribe now.